Okay, welcome. Welcome to Tech's first ever virtual social fuse. This session is being recorded and may be shared publicly in the future. So thank you so much for watching and for participating in this event. I'm Stephanie Larson with the Technology Entrepreneur Center at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So for those of you who have never attended a Social Fuse event before, this event is meant to help entrepreneurs find teammates. I'm excited to announce that tonight we have more than 20 pitches, which is, which is great. We have some really interesting ideas out there, and I noticed that several of them are focusing on providing some solutions with the current situation with COVID-19 and the pandemic. Each person tonight will pitch their idea and will also tell us what skills they need to add to their team. So as you're watching, you want to listen for ideas that you are excited about, and then also listen for the skills that you have to add to these teams. Each person pitching has two minutes or less to pitch their idea to us. So we are timing. So if you go over the time limit, we ask that you stop um, and let the next person pitch. I also want to take a minute here to thank founders for partnering with us on this event, along with Sathwick Ready and our whole tech team here who was able to turn this event around in just a matter of two days. Thank you, team. Okay, let's jump right in with our first pitch. Uh, team Edify is our first pitch. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Neal. I am a product manager at Edify. Uh, I want to start out by thanking Catherine and Stephanie for organizing this event and honestly doing such a great job of being adaptive in this time. Um, the TEC has been great. Uh, I'll jump right into it. Uh, our team is made up of students from various disciplines. Um, some of them are at UIUC, some of them are at Berkeley. Um, and basically what we do, we work with these four technologies you see on the left. Uh, that's prefabricated panels, uh, sensors, machine learning, and building information models. Those are technologies within the construction industry. And we're at a very exciting time in the construction industry where things are becoming uh, digitalized very quickly. So we're kind of looking to be a part of that. Currently, we're in stages of scoping with a popular uh, prefabricated construction company that's been around for quite a while. They're interested in what we do. So we're gonna be working with them to build out our product. Um, we're currently in scoping phases there. And essentially the goal, um, you know, when you, when you hire a, a consultant, generally you either have a goal of making more money or saving money. And our goal is to make uh, these prefab companies more money by building essentially marketing tools and tracking tools for uh, their projects. So if you're interested in this, uh, reach out. Uh, there's an email below, we'll be at the Google Hangouts. Um, even if, you know, maybe not an internship or part-time, but if you have a general interest, come talk to us and we'll see if we can get you involved. Thank you. Okay, next is AgriWater Tech. Shorna, I think you might be muted. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and let you start from the beginning, just in case you were uh, partway through your presentation. Oh, I was there muted. You go. Okay, going to start over. Less than 24 hours ago, big cities such as Los Angeles have mandated to wear a mask in public. Even Laredo, Texas has find people, can find people $1,000 for not wearing a mask. And for us in the state of Illinois, Governor Pritzker has recommended masks for public outings. With the looming possibility that masks will be mandated here in Illinois, we must take action and supply over 11 million people with face masks. In order to remediate this pandemic, this 
is where the need lies. Hi, everyone. My name is Bianca Bailey, and I'm the founder of Agri Water Technologies. We are a vendor distribution company for women owned and diverse businesses. Um, and we're here to show you the quarantine box. The quarantine box, it will be equipped with um, a face mask manufactured by our own female manufacturing line. This is our first prototype, um, a plant-based hand sanitizer, um, and also a household uh, lead water testing kit and many other products to choose from. I think if Amazon and Birchbox and Holistic Health had an e-commerce baby, it would be the quarantine box. During this pandemic, we bridged the gap for diverse small businesses to sustain an economic advantage by creating an e-commerce platform for advertising to drive sales and push inventory. We monetize the market through vendor contracts and customer subscription-based models. We are looking for web developers, industrial designers, and social media gurus to help our venture. We have pre-orders coming in every day. Please email me at shormabb5 at gmail.com to help us save America and keep the world safe. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Okay, next we have AR 1.0. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Hi, uh, my name is Sothwick and I'm working on a project that's currently titled AR 1.0. Um, I'm hoping to get a better name by the end of tonight. But uh, the idea is to rethink computing and the future of computing. Uh, computing moved from being a community resource uh, with mainframes and large computers in, in one place to uh, they became more personalized with computers like the Macintosh and the PC. Now, computing has moved down to an even more personalized level through smartphones, smartwatches, etc. But I think the future of computing is moving beyond personalized devices and going back to a community sense with a ubiquitous computing infrastructure where computers are everywhere, but the experience that you get from the computer is personalized. Now, to work on this, companies are working on, uh, to work with this, companies are working on AR and VR technologies. Uh, these are primarily focused on graphical um, extensions of reality. I think the first model for AR or augmented reality is actually going to be audio. And I wanted to see that dream become a reality. Um, I'm currently working on this. I'd love to hear what kind of skills you have or any of your input on just about anything. We're currently looking for industrial designers, electrical engineers, and um, user experience designers. So thank you. Thank you. Next, we have data and network security. Okay, I'm gonna move on. I believe they did not join um, to Equability. Hi everyone, my name is Hilary Pham um, and my venture is called Equability. Equability offers a clothing modification service that focuses on the functional features of clothes um, that could be challenging for people's dexterity or mobility issues. So anyone who has something from arthritis all the way to MS, um, and we would not be changing the design or the size of the clothes at all. We would just be focusing on the challenging functional features like the buttons of a button down shirt or um, the zipper on a pair of jeans. So we'd modify the clothes using really basic existing technology. So things like magnets, Velcro or snap buttons um, and people would be able to send in their clothes that they already own. So if they have a favorite button down shirt, they could send it to us or we would partner with retailers. And if someone bought something new and wanted to have it modified, they would send it to us and we would send it back to the customer or back to the store for in-store pickup. Our slogan is change clothes so people don't have to, and we want to modify clothes so that people with disabilities don't have to change their lifestyles or their clothing styles because of their disability. So today I'm looking for a business partner, um, someone preferably with fashion industry knowledge or has a finance or accounting background, or if anyone knows how to sew, that would be very helpful too, um, because we are looking to make prototypes at the moment. So please let me know if you have any questions and feel free to join my breakout group after this. Thanks. Great, thank you, Hillary. Uh, next we have Fruitful. They may not have been able to join. Okay, we can move on to Fast Track.
How about first line? Hello, everyone. My name is LaShawn James. I'm the founder of First Line. First Line is an application designed to provide firefighters with decision making support during an emergency event. I'm actually a firefighter here in town. And um, when I was recently called for a call, there was a, some person trapped on an elevator. So we got to the elevator. We actually had to locate the knock spot on the building. It actually wasn't on the building where we where we were going. It was actually across the street at a different building they had. Had to locate the box, um, find the elevator shut off room, shut off the elevator, and then finally get the um, patient out of the elevator And if they didn't have any medical conditions or whatever. But um, basically firefighters deal with having to make decisions every day. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually make that process easier with allowing them to have this information at the palm of their hands while they can uh, access it en route. So firefighters, um, we typically um, deal with a lot of different type of buildings. Um, we deal with maintenance. Um, so we need to have the maintenance phone number to make sure that we can contact them right away. We need to know exactly where the rooms are in the building, having CAT plans available to us, and then giving examples of like how to actually shut off the particular devices in certain buildings. And so basically the, the process of work will um, we'll work with uh, insurance companies and then work with building owners as well. And then the um, independent business owners to make sure that the insurance company would actually pay for um, pay for the service that we're going to provide with this updated information with where the alarm panels are and where the um, all of the information for their fire safety is for the building. So uh, I do need a couple of people involved. So um, I definitely am looking for uh, application developers as well as uh, user um, experience um, folks and data analysts. So um, if you could, please uh, let me know. My name is uh, LaShawn James and uh, you can be reached, uh, I can be reached on here uh, on the app. Thank you. Thank you, LaShawn. Next, we have Fridget. Hi guys, I'm Vaidhi Umberdaker. I'm a senior in computer engineering and an avid hater of food waste, even though I contribute to it myself. So 4.5 pounds of food is wasted by every person daily on average in America. What we're trying to do with Fridget is help people manage their food better by giving them remote access to their fridge anywhere they are. So through this, we wanna give them real-time updates of what's in their fridge and a good uh, estimate of how long they can hope for that. With this pandemic, this has become even more relevant since we started working on it last year. So me and my co-founder Kareem, are an ag, he's an ag, and um, ag bio engineering student. We've been working on this for a while and we're looking for someone with supply chain and finance knowledge to help us really uh, move forward with the prototype that we're building right now. So if you're interested, in helping combating food waste nationally, please contact us at Frigid Life or join me in my breakout room. Thank you. Great, thank you, Vaidhi. Uh, next, we have Global Permanent Investment Account, GPIA. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Watson K. Bemende, founder of the, the main company is Kaizen Rhino Solution. It's a social impact venture focused on free market asset building. COVID-19 and the CARES Act exposed the devastating impact of individuals not having savings. So the problem we're solving is the lack of savings and asset ownership, plus the number of people that are unbanked, which numbers 50 million in the US. The way we uh, will go about solving this problem is we're gonna partner with asset building focused organizations, individuals, and institutions. For instance, the news reported today that Jack Dorsey is gonna donate up to $1 billion to the COVID-19 economic impact problem. Overall, this is a, a international effort. It's focused on the US primarily, but, but, it, but it also has uh, international reach. And there are up to 4 billion people who are in a position where they don't own assets that produce an income. 
the primary account model is a basket where you can place any number of dividend paying stocks. What we're primary, primarily looking for is individual with a marketing background. We plan to launch the first social impact uh, international standard for asset ownership. Thank you and I look forward to you in the uh, breakout room. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we are going to go back to fast track. They are here. Cool, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so, sorry I was a little bit late on this. Um, been busy with Passover for anyone that's celebrating. Um, hope that's, that's going well. Um, but yeah, basically fast track is, is trying to sort of tackle the problems that um, music creators deal with today, especially in the sort of 21st century model of the music industry, I think we've probably all known people that create music and they release it and, and everyone wants to think that their music's gonna go somewhere, but oftentimes it kind of falls short um, and can, can cause artist burnout as you know, your music doesn't achieve the success that you wish it would. Um, and a lot of times there are a lot of different things that musicians are forced to do now without um, the more traditional record label backing, um, which you know, record labels being uh, providers of all of the services that you need to sort of um, streamline your work so that it can uh, be successful to a wider audience. Today, artists are left to do a lot of those tasks. So the idea for Fast Track is an, sort of an online platform that connects musical creators to uh, industry experts who can make sort of a commission off of paid reviews for feedback on your, your musical ideas and also for direct connection to those professional services like mixing and mastering, art design, artist development, all of that stuff. Um, so I don't want to go over time, but uh, if you want to learn more about that, and we're, we're looking for anybody with interest in that or web development or business management, um, feel free to send me an email. Um, there should be an email address listed on um, contact there. So yeah, thanks. Thank you, Josh. Next, we have Hang. Sure, yes, good evening, everyone. My name's Carson, and I'm the business lead on Hang. Um, our technical lead, Chris, is actually Hard to work on the app right now, but um, he'll be available at our breakout room afterwards. So Hang is an app for nearby spontaneous group activities. And to walk you through this, um, I want you to think about the last time you planned an outing with your friends. So you probably had to message them over a text message or grouping or something like that. Well, we talked to dozens of University of Illinois students. We found out that it's perfectly typical to have to plan days or even weeks in advance for even casual activities like going to a bar, going to a restaurant. And even then there's always those times, and I think we can all relate, when someone doesn't show up, someone's late, their plans get derailed at the last minute. Well, let's say you're hungry one night, you look around to see what's out there, you find a cool new restaurant and you just wanna try it out tonight. You don't have time to coordinate everyone's schedules. You don't have those weeks or days. Now one option is going alone, Let's face it, that kind of blows. Uh, going alone, there's a social stigma around it and you'll probably be bored most of the time staring at your phone. So hang is a way that you can open up these spontaneous events and activities to people in your area. You just need to post a hang and people nearby can join in. So uh, it's a great way to meet new people in your area in person. And that's a key here, it's in person, okay? Let's contrast it with uh, the major services to meet new people over the internet right now, let's say Tinder or really any other social network. What is uh, common in these? Scrolling through profiles, hundreds of thousands of profiles. It just doesn't work. The statistics say that only 1.63% of Tinder swipes actually have any kind of activity. Less than one in 10 have any kind of meaningful conversation, let alone real life interaction. So we're looking for um, uh, marketing or advertising, people with marketing or advertising expertise or uh, experience. And, uh, but anyone at all, if you're interested, you, uh, I look forward to, discuss it, to discussing it in our breakout room. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Carson. Okay, so next we have one of our entrepreneurship ecosystem partners, Manu Etikara with iVenture Accelerator. Good evening, everyone. I just wanna share a quick story I had a student come up to me during my office hours and say, hey Manu, I'm so bored. I've ran out of things on Netflix to watch. So I wanna give all of you a virtual round of applause for working on uh, innovative stuff during this time and for TEC for hosting the social views for us. 
Uh, I don't need to say much about the current situation right now. There's a lot of problems that have been unearthed around the globe and they need solving. So this is an unprecedented time for all of us to work on solutions to those problems. And that's where we come in. Uh, I'm Manu again with the iVenture Accelerator. We are the educational program for top student startups at the University of Illinois. We're a full year program and what we focus is on accelerating your venture and your personal development. We provide everything from funding, which is up to $10,000 for your venture, a $2,500 stipend for yourself and every full-time team member, uh, expansive list of resources, and one-on-one -on -one coaching from some of the top entrepreneurial experts in the state of Illinois. Uh, we start off with 10 weeks in the summer, where it's a full-time accelerator and you're expected to work on your product, discover customers, and do office hours with all kinds of distinguished guests. And then we continue on through the school year, where we have a highly ranked seminar where we dive deep into startup issues and try to figure out what's next. Our students have done work that's been recognized all across the globe. They've been selected for the Thiel Fellowship, been nominated to Forbes 30 and 30, introduced the president. They've raised millions of dollars for their own companies. They've created dozens of full-time jobs. If you're working on an idea, a project, nonprofit, startup, we want to talk to you. We want to help you build your dreams. Our application deadline for this summer for our sixth cohort is April 13th at midnight, 11.59 p.m. Please apply, iVenture.illinois.edu. I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you soon. Thank you, Manu. Okay, next pitch, we have Lid Vision LLC. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Wilborn. I'm the founder of Lid Vision, and we develop technology for the materials management industry. And I know there's a lot on your screen right now, but all you need to be worried about is those four top uh, uh, lines, mission, tech, metrics, and team. And I want to start with, with the mission. So our mission is to truly create a circular economy. And what does that mean? It means materials don't end up in the environment. They don't end up in water supplies. They're not contaminating soil. They're staying in circulation. And the main problem with creating a circular economy is contamination. Now, contamination simply means putting something in the wrong bin, and this wreaks havoc throughout the supply chain after uh, you dispose of something, let's say, improperly, right? So you take a greasy pizza box or a plastic bag, you put it in the recycling bin, it contaminates the whole load, it'll likely get sent to the landfill. On the flip side, in the trash, you're putting aluminum cans or valuable materials in the trash, and that needs to, that's going to end up going to the landfill, right? But that's valuable material that you can be extracting. And what we're trying to do is solve the problem at the source by deploying devices on carts. And what they'll do is take images of the materials, of the contents, and using AI and computer vision, we can see not only contaminants, but also valuable material that can be extracted. And what we do is we take that data and we put it in a nice dashboard to show the user their metrics, what are their operational costs that have been redu reduced, how much have they recycled, what is in their receptacles at any given time, and they can implement a strategy using GIS technology. And this is really for our municipal partners. Uh, what, they, what they have is a lot of data and a lot of area to cover. And so GIS is very particular for them. Um, and my name is Sean Wilborn. Again, you can reach me at Sean at lidvision.com. That's S-H-A-W-N at lidvision.com. And we're looking for not only UX UI designers, but also anybody interested in computer vision and data analytics. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Next, we have Miriam Software. He may have dropped off the call. Let's move on to Mutual Aid. Hi guys, um, I'm Ella Sawyer. Uh, like many students these past few weeks, I've found a lot of free time. Um, and during this free time, I decided to be a little more productive citizen, read up on the crisis. And the articles I read spoke of how the pandemic would widen inequalities and disproportionately affects already socially and economically marginalized communities. It brought to light some of the critical flaws and the blatant lack of care for the most vulnerable in, the, in our population from the institutions and administrations we rely on for our daily lives. It stirred in my heart 
stood in my heart a reminder that we are all in this together, that we that need that we need to meet the crisis empathy and desire to aid rather than a desire to protect ourselves and our own interest. With this fire in my heart, I searched for ways I could help my community and the vulnerable. I ran into a concept called mutual aid. It was simple. Uh, community members help each other for the, for the mutual benefit. It means helping your neighbor in any way you can from sharing expendable resources like groceries and toilet paper to financial financial solidarity and skill, skill sharing. I was excited to find over 10 organizations doing mutual aid in the Chicago air, area. I immediately signed up on their Google forums. And after a few days, I, I began to lose hope and found disappointment that I, I would never receive the opportunity to help or connect to those in need. So I decided to reach out more directly to the heads of these mutual aid Google forums. And I realized I wasn't the only one with this problem. A lot of the heads started these forums because they had the same problem I had, wanting to help but unable to connect with those who needed it in the area. I wasn't going to perpetuate the problem by making another Google form for the same area and creating just only creating more walls and more middlemen. I wanted to create a more democratic peer-to-peer -peer solution where people in the community can ask for help directly and offer help directly. A safer, more reliable way to, direct, to directly get in contact and help those in need in your community. Mutual aid scaled for the 21st century. No more Google Forms and waiting to be connected, but being connected without delay, peer to peer. So our mission is simple. Um, individuals connecting to individuals within their community to help in this time of social distancing. And how, or, thank you. Uh, we're looking for UX designers and engineers, uh, mostly our current stack is in React Native. Great, thank you, Ellis. So next we have My Tide, Nick with My Tide. Hi, hi guys, how are we doing? Um, I'm Nick. And so My Tide started off as taking all the local events on campus and putting it on one central app. And in fact, the founders of the company, they went on to be a part of iVenture Accelerator. And what they got out of that experience of being immersed and what it's like to build a startup is they built their first version of the app, launching for the first time. And now we live in this period of more uncertainty than ever. And so what we're looking for in my type right now is we're looking for how are people coming together and having that sense of community? Because take the word for event, right? An event is really just people coming together. And so we are seeing right in front of us of how we can find substitute ways for all of us to come closer. And from our research of um, the local events happening on campus, we found that most local events are from student organizations. And so, our team um, at my type, what we're looking for is we're looking to talk to different student organizations, seeing what's their perspective, trying to um, be immersed in their shoes and how they are trying to bring together their organization together, keep that sense of community going. And so we're looking for student organizations to talk to. And also we're looking to grow the team specifically with UX uh, researchers and designers. And this is, the time of where you can be a part of my type and uh, talk to these student organizations and really be immersed in the star community. So hi, I'm Nick Boyven, and I would love to talk to you where we can learn from each other. And thank you for your time. Hey, thanks, Nick. Next, we have Project Covalence. Hey guys, uh, my name is Peter. So I'm just gonna start off by really quickly reiterating the gravity of the situation we're dealing with right now. So 200,000 people in the United States are projected to die from the coronavirus despite our current measures. Millions of people will suffer the agonizing symptoms. Most of the people who will suffer the most are the poor, like homeless people, the elderly, like our grandparents, right? Healthcare workers are working days nonstop without adequate protection gear. They're risking their own lives to treat patients. Um, 1,800 people died on Monday due to coronavirus. New York healthcare workers are literally choosing who lives and who dies at this point. Like, and the situation is only getting worse. So a, mo a majority of college students, including most of us, like we have the physical immunities to resist the virus, right? 
We have the luxury of being holed up in the safety of our own homes. We have the luxury of spending our time learning and doing extracurriculars. We, are, we, are stu we as students are more than capable of making a difference. And there's so much out there that we can do to make a difference. And yet there's not nearly enough movement across the nation from students in upholding this responsibility. So this is why we decided to launch Project Covalence, which is in summary, a movement to galvanize and inspire students across the entire nation to take action and help combat the symptoms of coronavirus in whatever way they can. And just to go over really quick examples of how students can help out. Consulting groups and computer science savvy students can collaborate with and assist local small businesses in transitioning them to e-commerce. Engineering RSOs can 3D print um, ventilator parts and stuff like that. So my RSO zero to one has partnered with Hack for Impact and, and Nactus to launch this movement. Um, starting with UIUC, we're gonna start getting students to actually start taking action in our communities. So please reach out to me if you're experienced in fundraising, finance, getting sponsorships, marketing, video editing, graphic designing. If you're already doing something to combat coronavirus, please reach out to me as well. Showing your efforts on our website will help inspire more students to take action as well. Um, so yeah please re reach out to me afterwards. Thank you, Peter. Next, we have Alan with Promote Properly. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next pitch with Q4U. Oh, I'm okay. here. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Was my audio off? Yes, you can start yeah. over. Okay. Sorry about that. Hi, uh, my name is Alan. Uh, I'm the founder of Promote Properly. I want to thank you all for coming out uh, to this pitch today. I know it's a rough time, um, but I wanted to talk about advertising and how it can affect our current situation right now. So to start off, I wanted to put this little article snippet here on the left, and it might look small for you right now, but I'll tell you a little about it. That's a snippet taken from a blog article written by Andreessen Horowitz. So those of us who are deep into startups know about Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, actually, a U of I grad who graduated in 1994 uh, made a little thing called Mosaic Browser, which became one of the first browsers to include images. And he went on to start a very successful investment firm. Um, they've invested in Box, Facebook, Lyft, Slack, and Groupon. So they're quite reputable. Um, so here's a list that they compiled of the top 100 startups that exist online right now. And some of these are names that we know. So as you can see, there's Airbnb, DoorDash, Instacart, Postmates. Um, but out of all 100 of these startups, as you can see there on the left, not even one is in marketing or advertising. Um, so if you look carefully, not even one. And uh, Promote Properly might not be in this list. It may or may not be in this list, but there is bound to be a startup in marketing or advertising that will uh, join the list sometime here soon. So uh, Promote Properly helps the business owners find and manage advertisers, the marketplace for posting advertising opportunities. And we help marketers advertise more affordably. If you go to promoteproperly.com right now, we've updated the website. So you can come check that out. And if you go on the site, you'll see uh, a search uh, filter and you can select opportunities right there on the website. Um, we're just looking for feedback on this pitch. We have a team of four and we're hard at work. And uh, we like to keep the team small, but we are looking for some developers right now to help out. We're particularly looking for ideas and how we can incorporate um, some things that are relating to COVID-19 in the startup right now with different advertising opportunities that can support that. Um, we're giving an option to some of the sellers on the site to make their advertising go as a donation towards COVID. So if they want to sell advertising and donate that, those funds to the pandemic and help out, that's a way of doing it. Um, and so, how, how could you use promo properly? Well, if you're an affiliate marketer, you could use it um, to advertise different opportunities. Um, and uh, thank you all for listening. And I'd like to chat with you later. Please reach out on our website. Thanks.
Thank you, Alan. Okay, we're going to go back to Michael with Miriam. Michael, I believe you're on mute. He's actually unmuted. We just can't hear him. Nope. Okay, let's move back to Q4U. Hi, I'm Julianne. I live in Los Angeles. And in light of the pandemic, stores in LA are implementing maximum capacity limits. Walmart announced it was hiring an additional 150,000 employees to meet increased demand. So here's the problem. The staffing boom means more workers are risking infection from higher levels of public interaction. Additionally, the maximum capacity limits can result in long lines forming outside which increases the risk of viral transmission among customers. Enter queue for you, a virtual queue just for you. Our goal is to spread out customers throughout the day by one, allowing customers to schedule shopping times in advance, and two, incentivizing grocery pickup for those in need of assistance. This ultimately results in maximizing social distancing, maintaining the usual customer base, and also maximizes the time and space for grocery store employees to disinfect the facility. So how does it work? Moving to the graphic on the left-hand side, customers will be able to see a distribution of time signups per time slot, select their preferred time, opt to volunteer to pack groceries for customer in need, which would then move them up in the queue, then bring the QR code or unique code that they receive in their email, check into the store, do their shopping, and then pack groceries if they've volunteered. An employee will then notify the customer requesting pickup when their order is ready, ready. Ultimately, through enhanced management of high traffic times, Q4U creates a safer environment for both customers and employees. We are currently working to launch the Q4U web interface in two weeks and can use backend web developers with AWS experience, UI UX designers, and especially enthusiastic students with marketing skill sets. Maximize social distancing with Q4U. We can be contacted through our mock interface, www.q4ugroup.wordpress.com. I look forward to seeing others in the breakout room. Great, thank you, Julianne. Next we have single action needles. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm Dylan Peters and I'm here representing the product uh, called Sandy or single action needle disposable. And so before I really get started about my product, I want to go into uh, a real shocking statistic. Uh, in the city of San Francisco, they give out over 400,000 needles um, every month just to fight, uh, what is it, needle sharing? And so about 40% of these needles uh, don't actually get thrown away properly. So they're out in the environment, uh, they're in trash bags poking through, causing at, like a very damaging possible point of infection for bloodborne illnesses. And they're really just a draw on the community. So our product comes in and it works in a two part system where the outer part, it, it makes up the needle in the outer portion and it is completely biodegradable only in blood. It's very, very specific for blood. And then there's an inner core, which is biodegradable, but still strong enough to hold together while it's still within uh, a patient's arm. So um, once it's like discarded, it becomes, uh, what is it, biodegradable in the environment after uh, we said, uh, it was about two to three weeks, which is pretty uh, pretty good. We're hoping that that can really cut down on the amount of damage uh, a hypodermic needle uh, uses in the environment. And we also help hope that it can uh, reduce the amount of spread of bloodborne illnesses. So uh, we're looking for uh, material engineers, marketing, advertisement, and finance. And we just are currently working on a patent 
and we're just named a finalist for the Health Makeathon through the Carl University of Illinois. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Dylan. Next up is Split Mint. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being on the line. Uh, my name is Kay Landers, and I'm currently a senior studying finance in the Geese College of Business, and I'm the founder of Splitment. Splitment is a fintech mobile application that allows groups to pay any payment together in real time. And the problem that really sparked the idea of, of Splitment was the process of how paying in a group and splitting that cost um, is. And so some of the current solutions that you can think of today are one person will pay for the bill or the item that you're purchasing and then everyone will pay them back via cash or a check. And for a lot of millennials, the uh, common uh, application is Venmo. And so the kind of the issues with that process is and the really value add that Splitment has is by paying someone back, someone has to initially front the payment. So you kind of putting someone in that spot to front the entire amount of money. Um, and then you have to go through that entire hassle of paying them back and, you know, worrying about getting paid back as well. And so with Splitment, it solves those two and eliminates those two main problems. Uh, and you can see in the top right, kind of the list of uh, the process of Splitment. So really easy, download the Splitment application, uh, link your payment, you can pretty seamlessly create or join a group. Um, and then your group is issued a virtual card. Um, from there, you're able to pay online and store by just moving the, the card to your mobile wallet. Um, and then you be able to pay together in real time. And so the bottom left, you can see as well, it's kind of like the process of it. Of Instead of having to pay someone back, you'll each have your percent that will go into the transaction. Um, and then some kind of final notes. Uh, we're really looking for some people to build out the team, uh, specifically mobile application coders. So if you're interested, please uh, reach out to any questions in the breakout session or uh, contact me via my email. Thank you. Thank you, Cade. Next is Swim Shark. Hello, my name is Faraj and I'm the co-founder of Swim Shark Tech. So let me start by walking you through the idea. Uh, as you can tell, it's a swimmer positioning system. Uh, imagine you're a swimmer, maybe going to the fitness club or your competitive swimmer, trying to, trying to get faster, you're at your swim practice. What we'll give you is a tiny sticker. It's a radio frequent RFID sticker or tag you put on your swimsuit. Uh, hop in the pool, do your swim, maybe do hundreds, 200 laps if you're competitive. If you're rec recreational, you just do a couple laps for fun, see if you can get faster, stuff like that. Hop out of the pool, go to our go go to your phone, check out the app, the app we have. On there, you'll see uh, all, all that data, your speed, your time, splits, underwater time, heart rate, um, calories burnt, all that type of data will be automatically uploaded and this will be tracked by this RFID tag. How it works is using our current prototype of the RFID <laughs> swimmer detection device that will track the swimmer location. We also use uh, computer vision to track uh, somewhere location in the pool and pressure conductive touch pads. And what we have right now is a preliminary app on the Play Store. We also have a provisional patent pending, which we have submitted. Uh, and we've tested this product with some swim teams. Uh, future goals is we want to market this product, obviously to swim coaches, fitness clubs, YMCA, uh, other types of fitness clubs, and integrate that camera-based technology uh, with the hardware so we can track swimmers with the added component of using computer vision. Uh, who we're looking for are marketers. Obviously, we need to talk to some coaches, fitness clubs, et cetera. Uh, possibly someone with electrical engineering experience because there are some hardware components. We want to continue, continue making the RFID device better and the pressure conductive touchpads better. And programmers. Um, what you might be wondering is what, how, how can this be applied in the future? Other sports timings, obviously um, track and field. Um, it also, also helps with Helps with skier positioning, ski resorts, skier safety. We'll be able to track skier location through avalanches and other just other outdoor sports safety. So thank you and come talk to me after if you're more if you're interested. Thank you. Okay, next we have unlimited pie. Hello everyone. My, my name is Peter. I hope you're enjoying this very minimal slide I put together. Uh, 
Uh, also, thanks for TEC to, for hosting this. It's a very nice event that we got to do, even considering the uh, COVID circumstances. But um, uh, this is, I guess, more of intended as a, a, you can think of this more of as a break from the other projects, because this is uh, by no means supposed to take up a ton of your time or supposed to be a project that, uh, you know, I want someone to basically work full time or anything. Uh, basically, this is just a personal project of mine. Um, I had an idea for a really fun game. Uh, and a couple of my friends have proposed other games over the past couple of years. And I figure, you know, if I get uh, one game to really, really work really well and be really popular on an app, um, on a, on a um, platform, on some application platform, uh, then, you know, I can move forward and develop some of the other games. So this is really just trying to get in the foot in the door into the game industry. Uh, and I have one game that I, I have uh, already developed a prototype for in Flutter and Dart, which pushes both to iOS and Android. Um, stores. It's based on a uh, game design that I started uh, last year that I've already implemented in my apartment with a bunch of friends, and I kind of got pushed to do this because they really liked that game idea. Um, so anyway, I'm actually already involved in some of the other projects that's been talked about today, like uh, Adafi, and um, I just talked was on the phone with uh, with um, Kate from Splitment. So again, this please be involved in other projects, um, but this is just something if you're interested in game design and just kind of want to try something out, learn Flutter, Dart app skills, um, uh, uh, database management skills, really is just, um, it's supposed to be a, a uh, 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 just fun. So um, I'm looking for uh, gamers, game designers, um, especially if you have server management skills, I'm looking for someone that can uh, manage a game server somewhere. So um, anyway, please reach out to me in the, uh, in the breakout session if you're interested in just kind of having fun over this uh, quarantine, thanks. All right, last but not least is Zero Home. I think Barkin wasn't able to make it. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Okay, well, thank you everyone for pitching tonight and thank you for watching live. I wanna make one announcement before we move into the virtual networking portion of our event. Uh, tomorrow night, we have a COZED virtual workshop series. It's a panel discussion with industry experts followed by smaller group discussions and coaching. You can hear how COVID-19 is affecting their businesses and ask questions um, about your own business concerns. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. and it's open to all students and you can find more information and RSVP on our website at tec.illinois.edu. Okay, for tonight, for the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes or so, um, we will be doing virtual networking on Google Meet. So each person who just pitched tonight has their own virtual meeting space. And this is all through Google Meet. Um, you can jump in and out of these spaces. <clears throat> so you should have some time to visit with several different people. You just go to that short URL. It's go.illinois.edu slash social fuse networking sheet. Or you can simply take a picture of this QR code right here. And that will take you to a list of everyone who pitched for tonight. Um, also have their contact information and a quick sentence or two about what their idea was. And then there is a link to their individual virtual space. So once you follow that link, you'll be able to chat directly with the people who pitched. I hope you enjoy your, your evening and I hope you make some great connections tonight. Thank you so much again for joining us. This is Catherine. I'm going to add one little announcement. If you would like to copy the link, it is noted at the bottom. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, in the description just below the video, if you're not watching it on full screen, uh, I do have the link there. So for anybody who's watching who would like to network, please go ahead and use that link and um, network away. Thank you.